Chamber of Chills. The boys are back in town, recording again. When was the last time you think we recorded? Oh, it's been at least a year. Yeah, it has been a, a year. Fuck, yeah. that's nuts. Dang. That's crazy. Well, you know, one of the reasons why we stopped was like, um, you know, we just focused on other projects, right? We were yeah. just like, yeah. It didn't seem like it was going anywhere, really. No, we were like, we're stuck, man. We were yeah. kind of put, it, put ourselves in a box, you know? Mm-hmm. I guess it's the Chamber of Chills uh, podcast, but I mean... It'll change, I mean, because this idea that we have for it, you know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, what we're going to do today is, um, it's going to be kind of, I mean, I, I don't even know what I would name the game, that we, what we would do, but, um. Yeah, just always called it playing producer. Yeah, that's what whatever. I, that's what I called it, yeah, that's what I called it, yeah. playing producer. <clears throat> yeah, I would be, um, so yeah, me and you have been, um, you know, before we talk about that, you know. We're actually working on a short film right now, me and you. Yeah. That's um, it's looking pretty promising. I mm-hmm. feel like we got the script right now. We just need to you know rewrite it. Well, we've already re- rewritten it kind of. We mm-hmm. just need to type it down, you know, and then buy props for the next couple of weeks, and then probably start shooting in the you know the middle of November, early November maybe. Yeah. So yeah, so that's going on. But mm-hmm. you know, in the mix of all this, we had a great idea. Yeah. A great idea, mm-hmm. and um, so what happens is we work on we work on the short film. For mm-hmm. like, we start like what, like at six, five o'clock. We start working on it when it lasts like an hour or two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just to work we go on to it. like eight. Yeah, we'll go to eight o'clock, and then what we do is, you know, before you, you know, you have kind of a drive ahead of you, so you know, we chill. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want to stay too late, so we chill on the front porch, yeah. and we just shoot the shit. We just shoot the shit, and you know, have fun and just talk, and you know, yeah, talk about movies yeah. and girls or whatever. Yes, absolutely, and you mm-hmm. know, girls is a big discussion, but. Yeah. You know, I started doing this thing where, like, you know, I started asking you questions, like, you know, as a little fun banter. Yeah. Of uh, just like, so, Mike, if uh, they were, okay, so let's say that we're establishing the movie business right now, you mm-hmm. know. And, um, you know, some movie producer offers you this project, and I would say, you know, either an existing property or an idea or something, and mm-hmm. then we would, tr- you know, you would try to make it in, you know, your own and see, like, what would, you know, how, how would you do it? How would yeah. you make it? You how- know? What would your plot be? Yeah. Who would you cast? And obviously, like, everybody knows. I mean, as film fans, like, we mm-hmm. are. A lot of these movies that get made sometimes are, like, not, like, the original idea. You know? Like, Child's Play was, like, a... Was started as a one thing where mm-hmm. the writer wanted... The Don Mancini, the creator of it, mm-hmm. wanted it to be more like the story, like, like you know, like, what if the doll bleed and was living somehow and... Mm-hmm. The doll and the and the kid's blood mixed together somehow, and that's how the doll came alive. Yeah, you know, but that was hard. So they went yeah voodoo <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They they formed into something else, and they created something you know was very memorable. Yeah, and uh, that happens to a lot of movies, and you know, and a lot of movies um, you know get to uh, you know keep the same plot and mm-hmm. storyline, of course. But um, I wonder what the sheer amount of reboots and remakes now. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. and um, so the idea is, you know, that's what we basically, you know, you said yet yeah, last week we were like, we should just record this, you know. Yeah, we play this game like every week. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe one day one of these will actually turn to an <laughs> actual movie. Maybe, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as time goes on, we'll probably like talk about our short film a little bit more. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> but yeah, I guess we're just playing producer. Mm-hmm. Seeing how we're going, I know you, I mean, I didn't write anything down, but I, I came up with some ideas for you. Yeah. And, you know, there might be times where I'm going to, you know, there will be a little bit of pauses to check my phone, see what properties to give you and stuff like that. Yeah. But, for, you know, you have stuff written down. Yeah, I mean, it's not much, but. Yeah, but, I mean, you you know, there's some ideas. Yeah. yeah. More prepared than I, I think. <laughs> but um, let's talk about the, let's talk about the, the ideas we had before, you know, you, uh, you, you requested to record. Yeah. You know, oh, well, well, how did it start? What do you remember? What I like started with with you. I don't remember what kicked it off. Yeah, but I think it started with. Um, I think I mentioned like a. It was wasn't it like a Jurassic Park type of thing to it. We, I told we did you about, talk about Jurassic Park. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And then the best idea that we that we came up with, or you you came up with, was mm-hmm. when I threw at you, was like a Beetlejuice remake or something oh, like yeah. that. And how how would you do it? And yeah, um, it was fun. Yeah, it was, uh, we were, we laughed our ass off. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I believe it was like uh, like we wanted it to be a, a gay couple. Like you wanted a gay. Yeah. 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 We we turned it to a gay couple, <laughs> and uh, the actors were going to be uh, like uh, Willem Dafoe and uh, Rami Malek. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why we. I don't know how, but like, um, but it ended up going to that point. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was in. But ultimately, it was uh, it was interesting. It yeah. was interesting, fun. It was really funny because I told uh, I told my buddy. Uh, I told my buddy about it like what the yeah. idea was and he was like man i'm not gonna watch that bro and uh, he was like he was like man what else what else what, is, what else you got yeah. for it and he was like well we also had cat dennings play play the play a goth next door neighbor or whatever and oh was, yeah she was trying to get the gay dudes yeah, out, yeah. out of the house for yeah. some reason and um yeah and he was like oh he's like well i'm listening now <laughs> so yeah of course yeah of course right yeah. um so yeah that's how i mean that's how it started you were like it was really fun we had mm-hmm. a great time and so yeah, now we're here. So yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know how you want to start off. Do you want me to go first? You want me to give you something? You know what I mean? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. Well, so I was thinking of a movie that has been in production hell for a long time, and I don't know. I don't know what studio owns it. Mm-hmm. I thought Warner Brothers did. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody could correct me. But I mean, you know, it's a project that has been it's literally development hell for the longest longest time, mm-hmm. and. um I thought I was like, oh, let's see what my buddy, see what my buddy Mike would think about this mm-hmm. Sony. So okay, <clears throat> so Mike, yeah, you're established. Your your movie, your couple movies in. All right. They're they have confidence in you. Mm-hmm. Haven't you know, flopped yet. Haven't <laughs> flopped yet. No, you made a lot of money for these for these bastards. Oh shit. So, they're like, you know, like they're now they're finally thinking like, this property that you know we've been trying to get off the ground. I mean, we attach his name to it. People probably go see it. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're sitting with you at the meeting, right? And they're like, <clears throat> they're like, they're like, all right, Mike, <clears throat> we have this property that you know mm-hmm. we want you to do, and uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna give you full reins, write the script. You could bring anybody you want on if you want to bring a mm-hmm. co-writer, if you want to bring your own cinematographer, you want to do everything yourself. Just let us know. Mm-hmm. But we're thinking about tackling you tackling the Crow remake. Oh shit! Yeah. All right. Man. Okay, so uh, okay, so before you answer what you would do mm-hmm. with it, on a le- uh, scale of one to ten, how excited would you be? I just my pants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's like a ten or a twelve then. Yeah. So yeah, super ex- uber excited, right? Yeah, The Crow is like one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Yeah. Would you put in your top twenty, top fifteen? It's up there. It's up there. Yeah. It's up there. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah, because uh, I don't know why. Um, I mean Halloween, the the ho- how you know the Halloween seasons? Yeah. Kicking up here, and I was thinking about a costume. I I really want to do the crow, and I was thinking, I was like, oh, maybe I should give that to, give that to Mike. See what yeah. he did about it. So, do, would you have any like? I mean, sh- I mean, try your best putting mm-hmm. you on the spot. I mean, that's what this thing is putting each other on the spot with movies. But um, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I'm sure we'll we'll think of stuff, and we'll have stuff that you know will keep us stuck. But mm-hmm. we'll try our best to come up with some. But you know, I mean, as of right now, just you telling you. I mean, is anything like a ring, like, you know... I want Brandon Lee to come back. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, we cannot... You know, that's a lot of money to bring the dead back together, yeah. so... Unfortunately, yeah, we can't... Technology can just Lee. isn't there yet. Really? Well, I mean, so you would... So you, uh... Dang, you really like Brandon Lee in the, in the role, huh? I did. I wouldn't see G.I.M. in there, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that what they did? Uh, they did in the movie, they... I couldn't tell Because he died, all. like, halfway. Yeah. I so couldn't there tell So there's a couple spots they CGI'd him in. Really? Yeah. Oh, some of the oh, it must be good CGI, better CGI than we have today. Cause yeah. I, I was, it was person. I mean, I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. I actually, I, I've been wanting to rewatch it. Yeah. You know, it's been a while. It's been a couple of years. But mm-hmm. uh, maybe I'm trying to seek it out next time. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, they did a really good job with that. I mean, you know, I always thought the the, the villain's name was kind of corny. Yeah. You know, I haven't read the the comics at all. Have you Have you read a Crow oh, comic? I, I have it. You can borrow it if you want. Oh, I'll I would love to next now. week. Yeah, I would love to. Next week, you should bring that back so I can read it. Yeah, but I mean, but is was that the villain in the comic, or were they they kind of like riffed off of it? Yeah, so he was still like the leader of the gang, but in the comics, it was actually uh, I think his name was T Bird. T Bird. Yeah, the first guy that mm. that Brandon Lee murders. The black fella, right? Yeah, he stabs him with yes, a bunch yes. of knives. Cool scene. He is actually the last guy he kills because he's the one who actually like fucked up his girlfriend oh okay yeah oh okay that's interesting mm-hmm. but like uh, what's the what's the villain's name in the movie what's the uh, uh, Top Dollar Top Dollar yeah. yes 
I hated that name. Even as a kid, <laughs> I was like, Top Dollar. Yeah. A lot of rappers with better names than that. Yeah, is this some white guy looks yeah. kinda like Peter Steele? Yes, yeah. big time. He looked like a he looked like a Dracula ripoff too. Yeah. You know? Um I always thought Hugo Weaving would have been a good version of that yeah. character. Even though I like that actor who does it though. Mm-hmm. He's really good in it. I just I just the name was too comical for me. Yeah. Yeah, Top Dollar. So I hope you would change I hope you would change the the villain name <laughs> in your in your version, in Mike Maybe. Michael Wilkes version. He, he was a much smaller character in the comic. Really? That's interesting. I yeah. wonder why they went that direction then. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, well, like we said in the beginning, shit changes a lot. Yeah. But I, were I to remake it, I would I would stay a lot more faithful to the comic. Yeah? Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, like in the comic, he uh, he wasn't a musician. He was an artist, I'm pretty sure. Like a painter? Yeah, he like painted and like drew shit and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right on. So, okay, so oh, I wonder... That's interesting. Well, it came out in '94. That was the year I was born. Me too. Yeah. Um, so, so I was wondering why they, you know, I mean, rock and roll is probably like, you know, pretty big, I guess. But I mean, I think that's right when, like, the goth scene started to explode. Oh, okay. Dang, '94. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that would make sense. Well, I mean, like, that's probably wrong. You think so? Yeah, because The Cure came out in the '80s. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I love The Cure. See, they have a song. Yeah. They have a song in the soundtrack. They do. It's called Burn, was it? Yeah, Burn. Amazing song. Yeah. I love that song. I love The Cure. But it's not <laughs> The Cure podcast, so. Yeah. But, um, so that's inter- that's an interesting, um, who was big in, who was a big, who was big in 94? I mean, you know, as a rock star to make him, make them change it to a rock star. That's interesting. Yeah. But I mean, I guess it would make, you know. I guess it was, it was like alt, alt music. Alternative, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I can imagine for a young person in 94, like, not giving a shit about a painter. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? So maybe that's why. Like, I'll just change him to a musician. Yeah. You know, kids look up to musicians, you know, yeah, Kurt Cobain and shit. Star and right, right, right. So, so, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah. And then, yeah, they changed They changed it. So, yeah. For the better, because I always like, I mean, yeah. I really love that incarnation of the of the movie. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to watch it again. But, um, now, you made the joke earlier of, you know, casting Brandon Lee. And, you know, yeah. Brandon Lee's amazing in the role, of course. Mm-hmm. But um, we have to pick an actor. Yeah, we have to pick an actor. And there's been like three actors that have left the the current. Yeah. I mean, you I can't think, even call it current project anymore. Yeah. But like, I think Jason Momoa was the he was most the closest. Recent yeah, he was, and he the was the closest, I believe. Yeah, they even got his ass in makeup. Which yeah. actually, there's a picture you could look up. I'm sure yeah, I've seen the picture. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, he actually. He actually looked pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean, he covered his face. Yeah. You could only see the eyes, the famous mm-hmm. eyes. And I, I really love the whole, like, um, the the style of it. Almost Joker-esque, like, the, the paint kind of looks worn out. I really like yeah. that look a lot. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're going for this one. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it, look up on Google Images, Jason Momoa, the crow, and mm-hmm. I'm sure it'll pop up. But, yeah, the makeup looked pretty badass in him. And, um, yeah, and I believe, I really, I was really a fan of this casting. He was, like, one of the first when it started to, mm-hmm. like, get a little bit of noise when it first started coming back uh luke evans i don't know if you you've seen his work but he was in dracula untold he was the main character in dracula untold in the movie mm, that i didn't care for yeah. but I, I like him as an actor he was uh i think he was the villain in uh the fast and the furious movies you yeah know? i think he was the one before jason Statham. yeah absolutely I, I think they were brothers or some shit or yeah. whatever you know whatever the, of course they're brothers you know of course the lazy writing <laughs> whatever but um but yeah I, I like him i really like him I like his yeah. look. I think I thought he could have rocked it really well, in mm-hmm. my opinion. And then, after him, mm-hmm. after he left the project, um, Jack Houston was cast to it. And a lot of people don't know who Jack Houston is. I haven't really. I think he was in like Boardwalk Empire. He was in that mm-hmm. show for a little bit, but I just know his dad. His uh, his. I don't know if it was dad or his great. Oh, uh, I think it was his granddad or his grandfather. Uh, Name uh, John H- uh, Jack Houston. He was in Chinatown. I could be wrong about the name, but he was in Chinatown. He played the villain in Chinatown. Really great actor. Uh, rest, rest in peace. Um, but yeah, he was attached to it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he was part of Boardwalk Empire. Then he fell out. And then that's when Jason Momoa got cast, mm-hmm. and that was like the closest it got. And then now it's just back on the shelf. Yeah, big time. I don't even know if you call it a shelf. I just I threw it, buried it a little bit. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like you know I don't. I don't know. Do you think it'll ever happen? It's got to, right? It's got to. Right. I mean, I'm surprised it hasn't. <laughs> yeah. Already in the in the in the in the landscape of film that we live in today, where everything that literally comes out now is either a prequel, sequel, a remake, yeah. a reboot, or whatever the fuck. Like it's 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 insane that that's the one project that's like been in development hell. It's like, what are you trying to make it into? Like, I mean, 
you know, like you that that like... makes people want to leave the project and be like, ah, I can't deal with, you know, because what everybody's saying is the classic whole creative differences. Yeah. You know, that's that's always the that's always the reason why people are falling out with this movie. And it's like, what are the studio trying to do? You know what I mean? And for and like yeah. that makes me believe that they're trying to go big with it, mm-hmm. which, you know, I don't think you should. You know what I mean? Even though yeah. the 94 film was sort of had a big budget for its time. I think it was like mm-hmm. 23 million. 23 million that was the that was the budget and you know it made like 50 million which is you know not too not too shabby yeah you know you spawned a lot of sequels but i mean now back to the actor i mean do you have does anybody mm. come out to your head and be like i want you know i want this guy as they're asking you right now the producers are looking you in your eye right give, now yeah give oh. us a list of who you want because we want you know we want to get this off the ground for you know finally All right. first name off the top of my head um I'm thinking Ezra Miller currently plays the Flash in the DC Universe. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting one. Yeah, you could put like, if you, I mean, you know, it's kind of funny you say, mm-hmm. the more I think about it, if you put the brand, the Brandon Lee wig on him, it basically looks like Brandon Lee, kind of. Yeah. He's almost, he's like, yeah, he's almost a shoe-in, basically. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That's a good, that's a, that's an interesting name. Yeah. But what if they're like, ah, we don't know if we want the Flash to play the Crow. He's too big. He's yeah. Well, he's already in a superhero. Yeah. Thing. People, I don't, I don't want to see the the Flash and that red car. You get that? I know that though. They would say. Yeah. Or who knows? Maybe they love the idea. I don't mm-hmm. mind the idea. Mm-hmm. Was there anybody else throwing some other names out there? No, nothing's really come to mind. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. I feel like the Crow is like a. I feel like everybody would fuck. We fucking want to be the crow. I'm trying to think now. Who like would have been? I'm, try, I'm trying to think myself. I definitely. I guess you would. You definitely would want a heartthrob, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, he's got to be handsome. Yeah, handsome fella. You know, handsome yeah. fella. I don't know. Um, Jason Momoa would have been would have been good. That was yeah. already a casting in there. I wonder who else. You know, I'm gonna look up on you know online to see if there's any actors that I missed or whatever. Yeah. Just in case, you know, like, oh, yeah, this person was attached to the project as well. <clears throat> I think Jason Momoa is a little too buff for me in that role, though. That's it. Yeah, I think I would see the crow as someone a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> but they're like, but he's Aquaman. <laughs> yeah. Aquaman the Flash. <laughs> that's well, true. you're going to bring Ben Affleck yeah, in no. next? Yeah, you want Ben Affleck to play Eric Draven now? Yeah. That's get, so funny. You get Gal Gadot to play him. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> oh, what if they tell you? Like, Mike, we know this sounds crazy. Bear with me now. We want to switch to a girl. Yeah, we're gender bending it. Yeah, gender bending it. They killed Erica the boyfriend. Draven. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind that, but, I mean. Yeah, it'd probably be all right. Yeah, it'd probably be cool. It'd be interesting. But, yeah. um, but yeah, anyway, we're going straight, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that that'd be my first choice. Yeah, let's see here. So how about we do this? How about we? We're, how about we do this? Mm-hmm. Okay. So where where do you think the actor should be? What actor do you want to be working on this project? Do you want an actor in his twenties, his thirties? Yeah, I'm th- I'm thinking someone kind of young. Okay, so in his twenties. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and look that up. Yeah. Maybe not too big of a name. Not too big. You don't want a big name? No, okay. not really. Okay. So now I pulled up a list of actors who are in mm-hmm. their twenties. And so we have Nicholas Holt. I thought Nicholas Holt would be a good... Yeah. It'd be cool. I could see him in there. Yeah. Okay, so what if they threw um, uh, Daniel Radcliffe at you? I'd turn him away. Yeah? you yeah. turn away? Not a fan of Daniel Radcliffe. I, I like Daniel Radcliffe. I don't think he was Just not in this role. role. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about um, Shia LaBeouf? Nah. Nah, yeah. He has yeah. a tube of pudgy face, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be weird to look at. That would be weird. Yeah, let me see. Uh, Will Poulter, he's he's in his twenties. Um, Freddie Highmore, he's in his. He, you know, he played uh, what's his name? Um, he played Norman Bates. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, okay. So, yeah, and Miles Teller. Nah, I don't know about not Miles Teller either. No. Okay. Um. Yeah, Paul Dano. I mean, all great actors, but I mean, <laughs> can't really see him in this role. Yeah, I guess we would have to get an unknown. Yeah. No, for this one, there's a Liam Hemsworth. He's he's in his twenties. It'd be weird to see him without the beard, though. It would be, but replaced with makeup. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I guess uh, I guess I like the Ezra Miller. Yeah. My my second my second pick would be like Nicholas Holt. Yeah. You know. Um. So would you like? So you said you want to be faithful to the comics as possible. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, so like, is there anything that the movie captured, uh, what the movie didn't capture that was in the comics that you that you wanted, besides the story? Like, what the look of it was different, or was you know? I mean, the look was a little bit different, but I think that's just because the because the art style. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it had a really strong... I mean, I'm guessing the comic had a really strong gothic theme as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I would really like to dive into the whole... Um, I mean, I know that, the, you know, the comic is based on, mm-hmm. but, you know, obviously when when movies get big and, mm-hmm. you know, develop a cult following, there is, um, you know, different incarnations of the crow. I think I believe there's a lot, too, right? There's different people playing the yeah. crow in the comics, not only in just an... Um, yeah, it's not just Eric Draven. There's yeah. other... There's other crows. Yeah. And... I would love to see, hopefully, you know, some articles wrote, wrote about it, see what the best ones are, and I just dive into it, because yeah. I really love the look of the character. Mm-hmm. I really love the look. Yeah. But, um, yeah, anything else you want to add that you want to add to, you know, like they're asking you? What would your What would your budget be? My budget? Yeah. It wouldn't be that high. I don't see it being more than, like, $50 million, and that's at, like, yeah, tops. Well, I feel like... Depending uh, on the names. That's true. But, yeah, and if you'd get like an unknown, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be that much. Yeah, you know. So I mean, is there any is there any other villain that you could think of from the Crow series? I wish that's the thing. I wish we knew more of the Crow series. So yeah. we like uh, in the comic books. I mean, besides the one that was based on the comic, because mm-hmm. you know, get get to get to know more villains and stuff like that. You yeah. know what I mean? So, but yeah, that's cool, man. I would love to see. I would love to see it. You know, anything else? Would you like? You know like change like you would change the tone at all the atmosphere more clouds more less rain what would you do no i think they they pretty much nailed the atmosphere right there was one scene that i remember in the comics that didn't make in the movie it was like a big it was like a big shootout scene where he like killed like the whole gang in the middle of a street oh yeah yeah i think that'd be really cool yeah yeah would you go really bloody i don't remember if, i don't remember the crow being that bloody either yeah, it had it had some. It wasn't was it? it wasn't like over the top. It wasn't grotesque or anything like no. that. But there was like uh, I forget the guy's name, but like him putting the needles in his arm and shit. Oh yeah, oh shit, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, <laughs> pretty graphic. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. Well, I mean, so probably gonna get a nice R rating. Yeah, <laughs> so you would go full hard R as hard as you could. Yeah, yeah. Would you put less? You know, would you do less of something that the movie did that you didn't really care for? No, nah, I don't know. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I forget her name, but the the little girl in the movie mm-hmm. is not in the comics in the either. Comics, I don't think. No. So probably make probably capitalize on that too. I mean, maybe not have a little girl. Yeah. But I, don't know, I kind of felt like she kind of helped move the plot along. Oh yeah, I don't know for sure. Yeah, that's true. We would have, well, I mean, you'd have just have to, you know. Then work we gotta go it. go look for little girls and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, is the mythology of like how he like because you know again I haven't seen it in a while yeah. I'm kind of forgetting like uh, the main scene I remember is when he's like in front of Top Dollar like on the fucking on the fucking dinner table or whatever mm-hmm. like during that gangster meeting that they were having yeah. like that famous scene that's the only scene I remember like mm-hmm. vividly but um was there any like uh, mythology of like the reason like, of the crow in there in the movie mm-hmm. or was it basically like just like um like, people just kind of assume, like, oh, this crow's bringing him back to life, so. No, there was some, it was, there was opening dialogue. Okay. Like, during the opening credits. Right. Uh, talking about that sometimes souls get trapped and, like, mm. the crows are supposed to, like, carry the souls to the afterlife or something. Okay. So they do throw some right. backstory in there. Not throw your, no, not beat, beat you over the head with it, but. Yeah. No, that's good, that's nice. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to rewatch it. Yeah, it's a good. Do you think it's a good movie to watch around this time? Yeah, yeah, definitely. For sure. Getting ready for that rain to come in. Oh yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I would love that. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, moving on. All right. All right. I guess you. You know, you play. You're, you play the position as a producer now. All right. Here we go. Mm-hmm. You're sitting in the chair. Yeah. They called you in on an urgent meeting. You don't know what this is about. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, what do these guys want? All right. Successful. Mm-hmm. Like. All right, Paul. We know you. No, you only you made these movies. You're doing good. I know. How would I you? know I'm doing good. <laughs> All right, tell me what the fuck you want. No, I'm just kidding. All right. You gotta be an asshole in this business. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, man. I'm Never just... gonna make it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway. All right. All right. So, how would you feel about tackling a show? A show? A TV show? A TV show. Oh, yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Right. That's interesting. You threw that at me, Mike. Yeah. Okay. 
Right. Keep going. Nick Pizzolatto called. He's having trouble writing season four of True Detective. Oh, man. He wants to bring you in on it. And he wants to know what true crime story you want to base oh, this man. season on. That's that's tough, Mike. Mm-hmm. That's tough. Well, first of all, you threw me off of the TV show because I think mm-hmm. you know me well. And you know that I'm not a big TV show guy. Yeah. Not huge on it. But... I fucking love True Detective. Yeah. So, so you you so you know, so True Detective is basically you know it's basically just an eight hour movie basically. Yeah. You know, and um, dang man, it's so good. I don't know. I feel like me and Nick Pizzolatto would um, would kind of bump heads, man. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I think we would. You know, not to say that's a bad thing because mm-hmm. I think that could, you know there could be friendly bashing of heads. You know. Yeah. I think. <laughs> but um, oh man. What true crime story? I don't know, you know, because because the last because the first season's basically you know you know type in New Orleans you know fucking sat- satanic you know cult and molestation case in you know on Google and there's mm-hmm. a case that True Detective based it off of. Yeah. True Detective two True Detective season two was based off something I believe very small, mm-hmm. and I think season three wasn't really based off anything like you yeah. know so it's like. I don't know, man. I really, I really wouldn't know what to choose. So Mm -hmm. I think, but like, I feel like watching the season Mm -hmm. three rap, you know, was, um, you know, I loved it. I loved Mm -hmm. season three ending. I felt, I felt really like no closure at all. Yeah. You know, it really, that really upset me. I Mm -hmm. I mean, not to the point of complaining on Twitter, like the rest (laughs) of these fucking fools do. But, um, Mm -hmm. but you know, yeah, like first half of the season though. Fucking incredible stuff. Yeah. I loved it a lot. And um, I have a buddy who told me, he, who, you know, I, t- I asked, you know, like, mm-hmm. what do you want next from it? And he was like, and he told me, honestly, man, he was like, I would just, I think I would just ride off in the sunset. Yeah. Because, you know, knowing Nick Pizzolatto, because Nick Pizzolatto had a sloppy season two. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, man. You I turn would tr- him down? No, I'm not turning <laughs> him down. I'm not turning him down. I would yeah. try to convince him mm-hmm. to make it different. Yeah. Yes. Um, it might be, it might be, I don't know how, what people will think of it, Mm -hmm. but I would like, I would turn it into a, uh, I would tell him like, okay, Nick, like, Mm -hmm. okay, let's say, okay, I tell you producer, get Nick in the room with me and we'll talk. Yeah. Tell him, tell him what I want from him. Okay. Mm -hmm. So sorry to disappoint you with, with the, with case. (laughs) Cause you know, cause I feel like it really needs like a shot in the arm. Yeah. I feel like. Mm -hmm. And if Nick was sitting down in front of me, I'd be like, okay, man, how about this? Nothing changes. The vibe doesn't change with the show. Mm-hmm. But, okay, so, but some some of these cases, you know, happen in, like, the 80s. That's mm-hmm. the latest that we've gone back. Let's go to, let's go to like, the, the 60s or 50s. Let's go L.A. Mm-hmm. Noir style with this. True detective style. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Try, try to get, you know, that's where I would try to convince him. Because I mm-hmm. think that would be a really fucking dope-ass idea. Yeah. A dark L.A. Noir you know, thriller, mm-hmm. true detective. You know, I think I think I think it'd be something that you know. I was gonna say a western, yeah. but I believe HBO. You know, I'm guessing this is gonna be HBO, right? Because yeah. you know, true detective HBO. Mm-hmm. HBO has a lot of westerns. They do yeah. a lot. And I think the cl- closest thing they have is a noir was like Boardwalk Empire, but like mm-hmm. that was more of like a, a gangster a gangster show. Yeah, along with The Sopranos and all that. So I would go full 50s, 60s. Mm-hmm. You know, back in the day, man. LA, like, Noir, True Detective Noir. How about that? Yeah. That'll, that'll be a title. Right. True Detective, season four, Noir. Nice. nice you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah, and just have, like, a dark-ass, dark-ass case. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, have, maybe you have some influence with the Black Dahlia. Yeah. You know, have that. Yeah, have that cool. in there. You know what I mean? You know, and right now, you know, I, I already know Nick Pizzolatto's like, like, all right, but I want to do it all. I want to yeah. direct, you know, I want to write. But <laughs> if there's anything I could contribute to that, mm-hmm. that would be it, Mike, right there. Yeah. I don't know what do you th- what do you think? I dig it. Yeah? yeah, yeah. I'm glad you dig it. Mm-hmm. I would love that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I just feel like you know, first season mm-hmm. to place in like what like two different eras, no, three different eras, 80s, 90s, and the early in like late 2000, uh, 2014, right? Yeah, that's that's where that was. Season two had like a modern feel to it. it really mm-hmm. doesn't matter what the years were. And yeah, season three took place late 70s. 80s and then 90 mm-hmm. or then whatever modern day whatever it was but yeah it likes to go back to like decade like you know 
going yeah. back to decades, which I think is pretty charming. I really like. I really mm-hmm. like that. But I mean, I feel like. You know, I feel like the, the, you know, a lot of people were kind of mixed on the finale and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I would just, I don't want to say hit the restart button, mm-hmm. but, you know, like I said, a shot in the arm. Give it a different feel, yeah. give it a different vibe. You know, I think that's what that thing mean, needs, man. You yeah. know, honestly, don't go over go over dramatic with characters. Have, mm-hmm. like, two main, two main, um, you know. Your detectives, yeah. Okay, my, yeah, two detectives and stuff like that. And, you know. True Detective is known for having the, you know, their actors yeah. and stuff like that. So, I mean, man, I mean, Mahershala Ali was like the dream casting for me, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I was like, man, in a perfect world, that would happen, and it fucking did. Mm-hmm. I love Mahershala Ali. I love his performance in it. Steven Dorff was a weird casting. I didn't see that coming from yeah. a mile away, but he became like one of the best parts of the season. Yeah, he just stepped in and crushed it. Big time. I loved it a lot. Mm-hmm. I was so mad that he wasn't nominated for an Emmy. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, but yeah, it's known for its, you know. It's pairings, right? Yeah. It's pairings. The season, season two had Woody Harrelson and, and uh, Matthew McConaughey, big stars, mm-hmm. not what you would normally see on a TV show. Yeah. You know, but uh, and then, and then season two got way ahead of itself with that idea. Had Vince mm-hmm. Vaughn, Rachel McAdams, Colin Farrell. You know. Um, yeah, just way too big of a cast. Yeah, Taylor Kitsch. Names. Yes, it really. Yeah, it's. It, Wrote yourself in a, they it wrote itself in a corner that it really couldn't fix and like mm-hmm. not everything was like resolved and stuff like that and then you know season two it was you know they went to like they limit to three if you want to count the wife the the yeah. wife the girl character but mm-hmm. you know mainly Stephen Dorff and Marshall Ali yeah so with my pairing man I would have to go like <clears throat> something like I would want it to be a pure noir movie so like. Actors that I could see with that, with those hats on, with yeah. those, with that slick back hair, with those mm-hmm. pencil mustaches or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I would probably go with like I could see Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender, yeah. one of my favorite actors. See that. I think he would crush it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Andrew Garfield could do a good job too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I could see him in there. I could, you know, as a young, as a young detective. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think he'd crush it. Uh, I mean, I think. I think Jake Gyllenhaal would be a, the easiest, like the the easy thing to go. Like, oh, of course, you know he's gonna do it. Yeah. You know what I mean, I feel like that's an easy detective pick. But I mean, it would be cool to actually have like a maybe like an older detective. Yeah. You know, you know, an older detective. I don't know who. Maybe have John Goodman. John right. Goodman. Yeah. Being it, kind of a weird, you know, you know that you know something you don't necessarily expect. No, definitely. Uh, I feel like in a true detective noir show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe like that. Fuck man. Um, who else is like my fuck? My fucking favorite actor working. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, man. That's what, that's what I would go, honestly. Mm-hmm. And you could have everything that made you know season one amazing. You mm-hmm. know, drama with, between partners and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, I mean, that's all I could think of right now, honestly. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I I would love to see it personally. So yeah, yeah I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be my my contribution yeah. to this <laughs> season four of yeah. True Detective, Mike. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess it's my turn now. Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna go do an existing property on this one. I think yeah, they're gonna, right. yeah. Let's say you're. Uh, what was the movie that I gave you? The Crow did fucking amazingly well. Yeah. You know, oh Mike, you did so amazing with this property. You mm-hmm. made it so much money. Despite all odds. Despite yeah, despite <laughs> all odds, we don't know how you did it. Yeah. You know, um, so this one we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we, you know, we, we've, you know, heard you in interviews and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and we heard you love werewolves. Oh shit! Throw me a werewolf movie. Yeah. Anything? Anything you'd want to do with a werewolf movie? Oh man. I do have one idea. Okay. One that I've been kicking around for. Do a while. tell, tell. Yeah. So the basic premise is, it's let the right one in, but instead of a werewolf, in- instead of a vampire, it's a werewolf. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like young kids. Yeah. Young oh. Kids. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, so like eighth, eighth to ninth grade. Damn. Okay. Yeah. That's gnarly, man. Mm-hmm. What made you come up with that idea? Uh, it just popped in my head. Yeah. One night. Yeah. That's that's a pretty good yeah. idea, man. So it's like a uh, this little girl moves into this small town with her family, mm-hmm. probably in Seattle somewhere, somewhere with woods. Yes. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, good pick. I used to live I, up well, there. I mean, yeah. Need woods. Yeah. The it has to be in the woods, right? Yeah. So she's going into her new school, and on her first day, she's sitting in the principal office, think, um, waiting to see what class she's going to be in. 
sitting next to her is this boy with like a bloody nose and stuff. He was just in a fight. Okay. And so that kid is the kid who's actually a werewolf. Oh, okay. And at some point, they're like in the woods getting bullied or something. Oh, oh, and he man. fucking wolfs out and like just shreds like three guys. Damn. And guys, huh? Yeah. Or kids their age. I was say, you're killing kids? Well, I mean, teenagers, yeah. maybe they're a little teenagers, couple, yeah. couple grades higher. Yeah, a yeah. couple grades higher, the classic. The right? upperclassmen, yeah. The upperclassmen, yeah. That's interesting, man. That's really yeah. good. Would you have it like in snow? Just like let the right one in, too? No, I don't think there would be snow. No? I think more more autumn. Okay. You have the orange leaves and stuff. All right, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, okay, Mike, mm-hmm. how much money do you need? Mm, not too much. I mean, practical effects, of course, but... Okay. Um, for like the first, I don't know, 45 minutes to the hour of the movie, I don't, I don't want to show the werewolf at all. Good move. Yeah. So, like, when the dudes are getting murdered in the woods, for the first part, it would be from the girl's perspective, like, right. just on the other side of um, these trees or bushes or whatever. Right. You see the shadows. Yeah. You shadows. hear screaming, blood yeah. splatters and stuff. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you'd have to have a transformation sequence. Oh, oh uh, man, a kid in a transformation sequence, that'd be fucking wicked, bro. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be dope. Um, yeah, that'd be fucking wicked. You want practical, too, so you're gonna... Practical, you know, yeah. If I'm a man, Mike, if you if you but, get on the phone with me telling me this, man, I'd be like, dude, I'm excited, but I gotta tell you this right now. Mm-hmm. I was like, you you better go with the attitude of wanting to top an American werewolf in London, top the howling. Oh, you need to top these motherfuckers, bro. Yeah. You, you need to tell, whoever you hire, mm-hmm. you gotta let them know, like... We're trying to be, you know, because why not, man? Yeah. You got to be the best, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You want it to stick out. Or you could do, you know, a lot with a little, you know what I mean? Yeah. That too. I mean, sometimes you don't even have, to, I feel like sometimes you don't even have to show the transformation scene, you know? I always thought the idea of, like, uh, the werewolf, like, this, the sounding, like, I, like, American Werewolf in London, that transformation scene is iconic. Mm-hmm. But then I would close my eyes and just hear the pain of what the man's going through. Yeah. And just hearing that, I bet, would have been mm-hmm. super effective as well. Mm-hmm. But, of course, they were, you know, they were, of, they were ahead of the game, bro, and they showed it, they showed it all, mm-hmm. which I'm glad they did because it made, it made history, movie history, bro. It's like, no, it's yeah. one of the best transformation scenes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, I'd be like, yeah, I'd be super. I would tell you, like, <laughs> go all fucking out, bro. Yeah. Go all out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And They're telling you to go all out, you fucking go out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm thinking, like, 90 million. Oh, yeah. that'd probably be your biggest biggest budget, yeah. huh? Probably not making it back. Damn, man, that's yeah. crazy. I don't know, man. But, uh, I don't a kid, know a kid werewolf money, movie? I think. Yeah. I mean, if you sell it like that, bro, I don't know. I think people would go see yeah. it. And plus, there hasn't been a really good werewolf movie nowadays. Yeah, they don't really make them anymore. No, it's hard to find. Right. I mean, if you want to count like Wolf Cop or something like that, I believe there's like a on Prime. There's like a mm-hmm. there's like an indie one that I heard yeah. got a lot of praise. But I mean, as far as like being in the theaters, people wanted to go see. I don't see it that much. Yeah. Same, man. I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, kid actors, you can really pick anybody off the street, really, and try your best to, like, coach them. But, like, yeah. I mean, as a, as a, I, mean I was going to ask you what actors, actresses you want, but, I mean, with kids, it really doesn't matter, I think. Yeah. got to just find the best You just got to find one. someone good. But... Yeah. Have an audition of, like, 50 of them, find the best one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you got to do, man. That sounds fucking cool. Anything mm-hmm. else you want to add to it? I mean, there would be, I don't know. I think a lot of the budget would go to like the the setting and mm. stuff because you need a you need the school yeah and there'd be like a Halloween like school dance okay. party thing. Damn, man! So you're going full yeah. on well, I'm, Halloween spooky feels with this. Yeah, one. yeah. You want people to fucking play this during Halloween time, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. what's up, man. And then I'd probably spend a lot of money on the soundtrack too. Oh, give me some soundtracks. Some you soundtracks. Have an idea. Um, what are you trying to put on this thing? Uh, there's this one song that I had picked out for the, uh, for the school dance. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Some Kind of Monster by Patricia Wake. Okay. I think it's pretty dope. I could see, like, a little band, whatever they have play, mm-hmm. playing it while, like, shit's going on in the background. Okay. Um, I could probably use a Plus 44 song. Um, I don't know, at least, at least three more songs. That's what's up. Yeah. That's funny. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say, like, the Rolling Stones or something. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> super expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, that's cool, though. Yeah. I like it. 
kid kid werewolf movie. And yeah, I mean, I, when I say kid werewolf movie, I mean, I mean not like a kid movie <laughs> werewolf movie. This <laughs> yeah. is for fucking this is a rated R movie here. Mm-hmm. So um, so yeah, man, it's a pretty good idea, bro. I dig yeah. it. I'd go see it personally. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, we're friends, so I think we would go see our movies regardless. <laughs> yeah. I think if I made a Looney Tunes movie, you'd go support me, right? Yeah. You got Lola Bunny in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah. You want to you wanna go next for me? Uh, sure, yeah. All right. So, we're sitting in this meeting. Yep. Let's see. All right, Paul. True Detective went well. Yeah. I'm like the savior. All right. <laughs> so, you know you don't really like this guy, Uh-oh. but everyone's... Remaking his movies. If you say, oh, uh, I was say, if you if you say Michael Bay, I'm walking out of the meeting. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> we want All you right. to make Ninja Turtles three. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not involved, I'd be down. <laughs> yeah. But like, okay, but then it yeah. continue. Sorry, that's a whole another pitch. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So Stephen King properties oh, are shit. killing it right now. <clears throat> you can have free reign over which movie you want to pick. Oh man, Jesus. Um. Damn man, fuck, that's a good one. Yeah. I'm gonna have to look up his properties. Yeah, if you could, yeah, just keep t- try, keep trying to pitch me. I'm gonna look up his pro- properties right now. Yeah. So you know, I mean, but you're not. I mean, I mean, everybody thought Stephen King's properties were hot back in the '80s. Yeah. They're fucking hot now. <laughs> yeah. What's well, weird? It goes in cycles. Yeah. Like they did all those movies. Now they're redoing all those movies. Mm-hmm. And. Okay, man, I think I got one already. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. But the, I'm not doing it for him. Yeah, well... I'm doing it for John Carpenter. It's, it's the future. Yes, I get it. Steve's, Steve's Steve, gone? Steve's gone. Oh, oh well, I, I hated the guy. I, mean, you know, I think he's overrated, but I didn't want him to die. But, yeah. I'm not, again, I'm not doing it for him. Yeah, you don't get to have your Kubrick moment where he's like, oh, it was a piece of shit, the book was better. Yeah, exactly. But I'm doing it for John Carpenter. Yeah. And that's Christine. I had a feeling you were going to pick that one. Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, it's, it's kind of obvious, right? Yeah. That's the only reason, that's the only reason why I do it. It's because mm-hmm. that. You know, because I, um, I always had a soft spot for Christine. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I'm trying to think of what difference I would make it. I mean, I don't know if I'd change the car, honestly. Yeah. I think I would try to make uh, make it seem more of a, of a you know, the, the, the time we live in now is a lot more different from then. Mm-hmm. Like, let's say, like... Um, you know, his dad lends him a car, right? I'm just spitballing. Yeah. His dad lends him the car, and his friends are making fun of him. Like, oh, what the fuck is that? Get a fucking Porsche. Get a fucking something. Yeah. You know what I mean? This old fucking prehistoric thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of... I would definitely throw that vibe in there, because I think right. it's something... That's something to, you know, to talk about, I think, mm-hmm. you know, in this day and age. Because, you know, vintage is cool to some people, but, you know... But everyone wants new. Yeah, everybody, yeah. yeah, of course. And uh, I think I will throw that aspect in there. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, yeah, I would keep the car because I think the car, the look of the car, has to stay. Yeah, that's Christine. And um, surprised they didn't really make a, a sequel of it, because you know, or maybe mine will be a sequel. Yeah, maybe it'll be a sequel. Because right. uh, you know, I mean, no, I mean, you know, the ending of the movie, right? Where like I've never Christine, seen it. Christ, you never seen it? Never oh man, I gotta let you borrow the Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. But um, they uh, so they basically smash. You know, how they make the cars into cubes. They smash. Oh, it away. car compactor. Yeah, it's car compactors. That's where Christine ends I had up. Nightmares about those things. Yeah, really? <laughs> it's a pretty scary idea. Yeah. But um, but the last last thing image is shooting on because mm-hmm. one of the scenes in the movie, these the 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 bad guys they mm-hmm. uh, they try to get back at our protagonist or whatever or yeah. I don't want to call him protagonist because he ends up being the bad guy, mm-hmm. but um, spoiler alert. But um, they fuck his car up. They fuck the car up. And yeah. there's a scene where, like, it gets revenge and it, like, repairs itself. Right. There's a whole there's a whole scene. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. It'll go away soon. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole scene mm-hmm. where, like, it, the, the car, like, practical effects, the car rebuilt itself. Yeah. And at the end, it's all in this cube thing, but a little piece of the car just moves. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, sequel bait to the max, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, man, maybe... Maybe I'll do that and just have have the dad be super obsessive, but like mm-hmm. he's like the beginning part of the movie, but like have him believe like do a psycho like a do like a psycho theme where you think the dad's kind of like the main character, but then he dies like thirty forty five right. minutes into the movie. So give a little bait and switch in there. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, because I feel like you know, you know, because it wasn't your typical eighties horror movie, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean the eighties were dominated by like you know the slasher flicks and stuff yeah. like that. You know, so yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely choose Christine, man. Mm-hmm. I definitely don't know who. Uh, I, I definitely want some young actors play high schoolers. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, I mean, 
Again, I can't remember any act because the top of my head that would fit the bill. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, it was a lot easier hiding hiding teenagers with grown adults. <laughs> but I don't think so now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, that's what I would pick, bro. That's yeah. personally what I would pick. I would pick Christine. I would pick Christine. I'm just looking up other projects though. Yeah. Just for the fun of it. Yeah, I'd watch it. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, Christine in the modern era. Right, right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> There, Gerald's game was really well done. I liked that one. Mm-hmm. Joyland is was one I liked that came out really like came out in 2013. That idea, mm-hmm. like it's a novel, it's a novel. It's a you know, it's a hard case crime. It's more like mm-hmm. a yeah, it's more like a crime than, than it is a all right than it is a, a horror mm-hmm. you know novel that Stephen King is uh, really known for. You know, um, I don't know what else. Let me see. Um, <sighs> thinner. I was a fan of the movie Thinner. It's a fun yeah. one. I would that'd be an interesting one because you know mm-hmm. that'd be an interesting one to tackle because you know I do struggle with my uh, my weight sometimes mm-hmm. and it's you know it's a, it's right. a you know it's a yeah it's a it's a touching subject to me yeah. you know so yeah what else do they have here we have Firestarter uh, and he has a lot yeah <laughs> that's what he's known for <laughs> um, Dreamcatcher I always thought the Dreamcatcher was an interesting concept mm-hmm. don't know about the the you know. The, the actual thing you don't but, want um, to the monster swimming up someone's ass yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh Cujo would have been cool too yeah Cujo's uh you know I feel like you know uh, you could do something with that nowadays now mm-hmm. I think too but like not with that dog I would, using a pit bull yeah I would yeah I would use a pit bull maybe yeah. you know but um honestly bro mm-hmm. uh if there wasn't a remake of Pet Cemetery recently mm-hmm. I, I, that's what I would go for yeah. first. That would be my first pick before Christine. <laughs> but since that was really recently done, I wanted to choose something else. You yeah. know? So I picked Christine. So yeah, but Pet Cemetery is interesting. And um, for those who, who don't know, Red, Ru- uh, Red Rum, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Sleep's coming out in November, which yeah. uh, I mean, I'm pretty excited for, you mm-hmm. know, even though it's a sequel to the, to the Shining the Shining book that Stephen King wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, the director, Mike Flanagan, let him know that, you know, as much as you dislike Stanley Kubrick's movie, it's really well loved, and he fucks with it as well. And you know, it's gonna go off what his said as well. But mm-hmm. at the same time, trying to be as faithful as possible to the the book that he wrote for the sequel yeah. for the book. So, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, it looks good. Mm-hmm. I think you know, I think somebody on like in the horror community recently said like it looked uh, it looked kind of like corny in their opinion. But I, mm-hmm. I disagree. I think it looks I think it looks really interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm really intrigued. So, you know, speaking of Stephen King properties, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, what would you choose? I mean, this is not a part of your thing, but, you yeah. know, is there anything that you would choose from it? Yeah, I I would choose Sleepwalkers. Okay. Yeah. You you adore that fl- flick or what? It's it's a terrible movie, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you admitted it. it. It has a ton of potential. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's really, I, I agree with that. You have these weird cat monster, psychic vampire things okay. going from town to town, right. like eating people's souls. With this weird mother-son incestuous relationship, right? And I think there was a lot there that maybe, <clears throat> being like the '80s when it was made, right? They couldn't really tap into. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's move on to your, to my next one. To you, I think you're mm-hmm. really gonna like this one. So they, um, <clears throat> so you're chilling. You're, you're sitting. You're sitting. You're sitting clean, bro. Yeah. Werewolf kid movie did super well. Uh-huh. It's, it's <laughs> you're sitting on a gold mine now, man. You're like one yeah. of the most best filmmakers working today, bro. All right, mm-hmm. you're chilling. You don't make a movie for like two years. Let's say you took a break. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you're exhausted. I fucked off to somewhere. Yeah, well, no, I mean, <laughs> you're exhausted, bro. You took yeah. a lot of energy out of you that werewolf movie. Yeah, werewolf movies are not easy to make. Yeah. So where are you at? You took two years off or whatever. Oh, I did the Dave Chappelle thing. Yeah. <laughs> Went to Africa. Well, no. Okay. How about this? No. Okay. No. I wanted to be. <laughs> okay. Fuck what I just said, okay? Yeah. You're coming off of it, right? You're coming off mm-hmm. of it. You get a call from Marvel Studios. Oh shit. I know, I know, I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking right mm-hmm. now. But I'll continue. They're like, hey, uh, it's Kevin Feige, Mike. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we have you know, there's this property that we you know that we've announced already. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, and we're looking for a director and we think you'd be the you know, perfect guy for the job. I mean mm-hmm. What do you think about tackling the new Blade movie? Hmm. That's interesting. Interesting, huh? Yeah. You wouldn't jump. You wouldn't jump at it. You would have to think about it. I'd, I'd have to take a moment. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell me why. Tell me why. Because I'm. 
If I'm getting called by Kevin Feige, I know that means <laughs> I'm directing the movie, mm -hmm. and that is it. I have little to no input on how this movie is turning out. I'm just the man that behind was, the steering wheel. I'm glad you mentioned that, Mike. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're right. They would. They would mm -hmm. do that. Because, you know, Marvel is this entity. Yeah. And they're probably going to want you to do it a certain way, but you're going to be like, no, this is... You hired me for a reason. Yeah. I'm going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as we've seen filmmakers like Edgar Wright exit projects like Ant-Man. Yeah. So what do you think? You think, you, you like, you know, if they don't budge mm -hmm. and they look at you and be like, you know, yeah, there's, I, there's no way you're going to have full control of this thing. Yeah. I think I would, I would sign on initially, but I'd probably end up dropping out. Yeah? Yeah. Creative differences. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I had to For get sure. in just to get close to Marshalla so I could get him in my next movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, after you do this Blade thing, I got this uh, I got the sequel to The Werewolf. It's like, well, this probably isn't going to work out, but I have this other thing. Yeah. I'll keep you in mind. What's yeah. your number? It's <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. That's interesting, yeah. Well, I'm glad you did bring that up because, yeah, sometimes filmmakers don't have full reins of things. Yeah. That's why we mention every time before we start with a new project mm -hmm. that, um, you know, not everybody... <clears throat> Mm -hmm. and everybody sees eye to eye yeah. so it's like you know but you know but we, the reason why we say oh you're doing really good for yourself because that's the only way you can do whatever you want is if you know mm -hmm. you you don't fail with what you're doing yeah first out of the gate you know what i mean yeah so, and the second you do you're being questioned at yeah. every turn mm -hmm. absolutely yeah the bigger the budget the less control you get yeah they say you know but all right since you turned it down i'm trying to look for i'm gonna look for another <laughs> project for you you motherfucker yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed, really. Ah, eh, maybe I would be opposed to maybe. to doing a Marvel movie. Maybe if it was a standalone, not part of the cinematic universe, somewhere Sorry, where I Mike. would have control. But Sorry, Mike, it has to be a part of the cinematic universe. Yeah, I don't see them doing anything outside. Yeah, of, <laughs> so so it wouldn't work. Why would out. you make this movie that doesn't tie in with all the other movies to make people have to watch? So it's, it's all over the news now. now. It's all over the news. Mike turns down Blade, doesn't work yeah. out or whatever. Mm -hmm. What's he going to do now? What's going to be his next project? I'm probably blacklisted from <laughs> all Disney no, studios. No, no, yeah, just Disney, but like, who yeah. gives a fuck, right? No, but I wanted to remake The Hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you? Yeah, I mean, if I had to do a Disney movie. Really? Yeah. But, you, but you, I mean, Disney's the same way. They don't want you to yeah, make a dark is. Hunchback yeah. movie, Mike. No, yeah, well, it's think? it's public domain. Oh, something. it is, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, you just can't have the songs or whatever. Okay, okay. So, I mean, okay. What? Okay. What if? Okay, Mike, mm -hmm. we heard you're gonna do a hunchback movie. Calm down. Oh no. It's too, it's too big right now. Mm -hmm. We want we have another project we want you to tackle. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you listening? Yeah. Okay. You you could make it a darker version if you want. Mm -hmm. It used to be a comedy. All right. All right. The mask. Ooh, the mask. Well, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. First initial thoughts. Fuck, Jim Carrey's too old. What am I gonna do? <laughs> no, it's, it's completely you. Jim's gone. <laughs> oh, Jim's gone. Yeah. Shit. No, 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 he's not dead, but he's he's not a part of the project. Oh, all right. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, I, I could see myself doing it. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. For some reason, it, it got to my head, and I was like, I think Mike. I think Mike would 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 be perfect for it. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I could do it. Zany but dark. Yeah, zany but dark. Closer yeah. to the closer to the comics. The comics is really dark. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, who would you cast as Stanley Ipkiss if you had oh, to choose one? Jesus. Yeah, that'd be hard because no matter who you cast, they're always gonna compare it to uh, to Jim. Yeah. And so, fucking yeah. uh, Jamie Kennedy <laughs> get damn near lost his career. Yeah, pretty much. I think, yeah, I think it's pretty much lost. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know who I would bring in. Any com comedic actors working today like that? That you that you would because you know that's what I would go with too. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Jim Carrey was comedic guy. Even though I am going for a, a darker tone, I'd still want to capture that uh, the dark humor in it. Yeah, the super dark humor. But like, who was? Okay, so so <laughs> dark humor in it. Yeah, you know. But like, you know, I'd want to have like you know. To still keep to that route a little bit, so I'd, I'd yeah. hire like a comedic actor or yeah. somebody who's known for their comedic chops or whatever. You yeah, know? I'd go with a comedic actor, but it'd have to be someone who could still pull off like the dark grittiness. Right, 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 right. Who, who's the man? It's not Seth Rogen. I was gonna say, I was like, 
<laughs> Seth Rogen? Because <laughs> yeah. I, like, I feel like they would mm-hmm. do that. They would throw that at you guys, yeah. at you. Oh, man. How about yes. this? How about this? <laughs> he's not a comedic actor, but he's known to be funny. All right. And we're not really sure if he can pull it off, but what if we give him a shot? Mm-hmm. His name's uh, his name's Chris Hemsworth, Thor. Hmm, Thor. Yeah, what would you think? First, I was thinking oh, that's it's a little bit too big of a name. Yeah, too big of a name. Yeah, too big of a guy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna look up comedic actors right now. Yeah. Yeah. Who could it be? You want to? Um, hmm. Think all these people are old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, big time. Oh, I yeah. got it. Yeah. I accept. Okay. On me. Paul's Paul's calling me right now. He's yeah. got. He's Mike. Mm-hmm. I know who you should you should cast. Yeah. Yes. His name's Bill Hader. Oh. Okay. What do you think? Thank you, Paul. I'm uh, <laughs> making a small donation yeah. in, in your name. <laughs> you can just put me as a casting director. And, yeah. And, titles yeah i think i think that'd be perfect i think that'd be perfect yeah yeah fucking love bill Hader. yeah and he's and he could capture like dark and you could do dark too yeah he could do dark with barry, barry yeah, right barry. i remember you telling me it's pretty dark but very serious yeah funny as well mm-hmm. so yeah i think i think it'd be yeah i think it'd be perfect bro yeah, i think it would be perfect i think that's yeah i mean we said perfect like like 12 times 12 times because yeah. like, it literally is it's picture perfect I think. yeah yeah it's amazing good shit you're gonna find out in like two months like Bill Hader casted in the Mask re- reboot. <laughs> yeah, reboot. It's like, those motherfuckers. <laughs> Someone's listening to the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's great. Oh, man. Anything else you would add to it or anything? The Mask? Oh, man. Besides making it darker? No, not really. Yeah. I mean, I might change the way that the mask looked a little bit yeah, while he was sure. wearing it. I was going to ask you about the animation because there's very like yeah. really cartoonic animation that doesn't age well in that movie. Yeah, there would is. You, would you would you keep at that? Because I mean, well, part of, I feel like part of the charm was that it was cartoonish, you know. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I don't know how. I, I mean, personally, if I was attached to the movie, I don't know how I would do it. Yeah. yeah. I would call you up, Mike, and be like, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how to pull it off, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd I'd probably limit it, limit it more. Yeah. Because it was, it was all over the place. It was, yeah. yeah absolutely. He had his eyes popping out. Yes, and, yes, yes. Really hard. Like, uh, turning his hand into guns. And yes, yes. Absolutely. Looking balloon animal machine guns yes, and shit. Absolutely. So, maybe like a little bit right. of that. But more... Maybe like 15% of the movie is that. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know. It's 15% of that in the movie? No? Or would you say like 35% maybe? Maybe thirty five. Yeah, there's it's quite a bit in it. I'm not, I'm not saying like it's over. It was overdone, but when it was done, it looked really cartoonish. Yeah. It looked dated. It look, I mean, it literally kind of just looked like a cartoon yeah. when they would do it. But uh, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, stuff. there was like the big the big dancing scene with the cops and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I think scenes like that wouldn't be in this movie. No. Okay, for sure. Yeah, it would definitely be an interesting one to tackle. I personally don't know any ideas for me personally if I were attached to it. Yeah, I don't know how how the plot would follow exactly. yeah you definitely have to take your time with this one yeah <laughs> you know make it your own read a whole bunch of those dark comics really dark horse comics yeah. really fast but yeah anyway is there anything else that you got for me or yeah yeah i got one I yeah got one. all right all right you've been called in you don't okay. know what's going on right on finally they walk into the room i'm, yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you i didn't have a lot of fun with the stephen king stuff no 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 like i mean mm-hmm. the, i'm speaking the character obviously yeah yeah yeah, it wasn't right. Uh, the material was fine. I mean, it was cool. It was fun, yeah. I guess. But, like, you know, I also wasn't really, you know, super passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So they come in. They're like, all right. We loved your... We, we loved Christine. Okay, cool. It was amazing. I'm glad. All right. We want to work on a live action adaptation. A live action adaptation? Yeah. Okay. Of Gargoyles. Oh, shit. Yeah. Man. Honestly, bro... Okay. Yeah. Because I know you fuck with gargoyles heavy. I do. So, I'm telling the producers, like, the only way I do it is my buddy Mike is attached to it as well. Yeah? You bring him in? Yeah. You doing it together? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're writing it together. We're doing it together. We're yeah. directing. We're Cohen Brothers style on this motherfucker. Because yeah. I know how much you, you fucking love that show. I loved yeah. it, too, as a kid. <laughs> that was, like, my childhood. That was, like, my favorite show. 
as I, I still yeah. think the shit holds up too if you watch today mm-hmm. you know but yeah it's got, got a really hardcore gothic theme to it mm-hmm. man that'd be amazing yeah let me ask you this hmm. are we bringing Keith David onto this project oh, man I don't know man it's tough I would want to so bad yeah. but I don't know just the whole I heard the whole James Earl Jones bringing him back to Mufasa thing didn't work out really yeah. well you know but I mean then again he was CGI and you know it'd be really yeah. tough not to have CGI in this film yeah. So we're going to have a little bit in there. I mean, we'll try to go practical as possible, but, mm-hmm. you know, I would definitely make the, the gargoyles a lot more, um, more I don't menacing. want to, yeah, more menacing. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I mean, in, in the context of the cartoon, they're supposed to look menacing. They yeah. are. But, like, this would have a very, like, um, I would make it, like, a similar, like, uh, similar, almost like that Van Helsing Dracula vampire looked, kind of like, right. yeah. I would kind of do that look mm-hmm. to the... To the uh, to the gargoyles and like have them always be in the shadows when they talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fan- them being like more of a more of the more secret. You know, more secret. You know? Yeah, not just like, fucking flying yeah, around and shit. Flying around everywhere. Yeah, it's they'd like, be oh more. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. Shut up, kid. <laughs> yeah, you fucking kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, I wouldn't. Let, I'd have them be in the dark a lot. Yeah, that's what I would do. It. You know, again, doing a lot with a little, I think, would do. You know, mm-hmm. would do wonders. Yeah, but that, like, you know, but the glimpses you would see of. Of the va- of, of not the vampire of the gargoyles <laughs> would be you know memorable like when that yeah. lightning strikes and you see the full look of them with their glowing red eyes or mm-hmm. something like that it would be fucking you know be creepy you know yeah. what I mean yeah I'd love to do it <laughs> I would I would tell them Mike's Mike's has to be a part of it mm-hmm. and we're gonna watch the entire the entire show like yeah within the span of a day we're gonna watch mm-hmm. every fucking episode and we're gonna we're gonna write 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 and mm-hmm. make it the dopest live action fucking movie ever mm-hmm. you know I think we'd go I would ask you this okay mm-hmm. so we're gonna work on it together I'm gonna ask you do you think we should go with R on this one or what do you think PG-13 I don't know because a lot of people who love that show are now our age they're yeah. adults now you know it's true you don't see I mean even kids that are like 18 don't know what the hell Gargoyles is that's true but the thing is we would want them to come though but yeah. I mean I'm sure they would come if it looks badass but I don't know mm-hmm. it'd, be, it'd definitely be something I think definitely be a, a time to it'd be close yeah I mean it, it'd be on the fence for a while until yeah well, probably like the final editing room I, honestly I would tackle with myself like should I do it R but then but then again at the end of the day as we start writing the script that's when I think yeah that's would, when we find out yeah that's when we find out actually yeah you know? but yeah definitely keep that gothic Mm-hmm. That gothic theme to it, that mm-hmm. those um, definitely definitely was like go in deep dive, deep dive mm-hmm. into like the 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 mythology of gargoyles yeah. and like those um, the buildings that they rest on and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like, but definitely have the theme back. Yeah, the theme definitely coming back in a more cinematic form. Mm-hmm. That's a must. But yeah, man. I don't know. You know what, man? I think I would say, fuck it. Let's do Keith David. Yeah. Let's Keith David back in the role. Have Mr. someone voice. else in the suit and have him voice yeah, it. Yeah, have him voice it. Yeah. Yeah, man. You're not going to see Homeboy's mouth move anyway. you can see it. You know yeah. what I mean? Keith David's voice is just so fucking amazing. I love Keith David. Yeah, man. That guy's... He's, once he's gone, when he dies, bro, I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be yeah. fucking sour, bro. I'm going to be super sour. Um, I'm happy he's going to do the spawn. A yeah. character in uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah, because that's, you know, that's like the smartest move they could have done. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, I know you fuck with that HBO spawn where he voiced. Oh, it's fucking it's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. He, he was perfect, mm-hmm. you know. And, of course, Keith David's no stranger to horror. Horror as well, The Thing, yeah. and, you know, fucking They Live as well. Mm-hmm. Great movies. But, yeah, man, his voice is amazing, man. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't see why not. They, they, they yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't want us to do it. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know. Just that voice is so iconic, you know. Yeah. You know. Um. I feel like if the remake were, if, if the live action movie would be in somebody else's hands, because there was a lot of co- uh, comedy between the gargoyles. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just it's a fucking <laughs> thing, man. I hate when that happens. Sorry mm-hmm. that the people have to listen to that. You almost covered for it. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, I almost did. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we're in a big dingy-ass garage, so it's not going to be all practical, you know. Not everything's going to work out. But, yeah. anyway. But what was I saying? Yeah, in anybody else's hands, I feel like they would, they would yuck the, they would, um, uh, you know, yuck it up with the whole, yeah. uh, the comedy. You know what I mean? Try to make it too stupid. You'd end up like Hellboy? Yeah. yeah. True. Very true. Yes. 
the new Hellboy. Mm-hmm. And um, but yeah, man. I mean, but other than that, try to make it a dark. Just I would try to honestly, I would have like lunch with Guillermo del Toro, tell yeah. him how to handle. That's who I was thinking of too. Handle the monsters. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think he'd be the perfect guy too. Mm-hmm. You know, to like teach us and tell us like and how. Minus a producer or something, yeah, help us out f- with the monsters. I would fucking love that. Yeah, I would fucking love that. But yeah, I think you know, because I, I feel like these. Gargoyles, uh, gargoyles, as menacing as they are, like in the in the show, they're portrayed as, you know, they're still kind of tragic and they're very tragic. Yeah. yeah. So like, there's, it's something that you know we gotta care for these characters. Yeah. You know, even though they're scary and menacing looking. So yeah, man, that's what I would go. I'll go yeah. full like that, man. That'd be fun. But yeah, man. I mean, yeah, that'd be fucking cool. But yeah, man. Of course, I, I'd, I'd have to call you up. Be like, yeah. like the only way I do it is if Mike's involved. Yeah. It's the only way. The only yeah. way, man. You're not going to believe the project just landed in yeah. my lap. Yeah. I want you to do it with me, bro. Yeah. Gargoyles. I'm on my way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, man. That's yeah. fun. Mm. Yeah, that'd be a fun project. How do you see the budget on that? A lot. Yeah? <laughs> like, what are you thinking, like 250 Oh, no, nah, maybe not that high. No? I was thinking, like, maybe... Maybe 150. Yeah. Maybe 150. Maybe we could do it a little lower. You know, I mean, I'm the only reason because where we're because where we're gonna do it because I'm sure we're gonna want like we're gonna be in a city. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be in a city and not only a city but probably a busy city where like tourists are at and shit yeah. like that because we're gonna have to close down the streets. Yeah, because you know those those gothic buildings, man. Yeah. You know they don't get a lot of tourists there, so I'm mm-hmm. sure it's gonna be a lot, man. Mm-hmm. Plus, oh man, yeah, maybe plus with the whole you know. Design of the monsters and stuff like that. Yeah, man. It would definitely be the most expensive project. It yeah. would definitely... I think, honestly, a project like that would probably take two years. Yeah. A long fucking time. Mm-hmm. You know? Which, I mean, I would look at it as a challenge. Yeah. You know? Because I remember telling you mm-hmm. when we'd have our, like, movie discussions, like, like uh, I probably wouldn't go higher than $80 million for any of my movies. Yeah. You know? Keep it small, simple. Maybe eighth month shoot. You know? Get mm-hmm. it done. You know? But, I mean... Man, a project like that would be too hard to, you know, turn down. Yeah. And but the workload I feel like would have to be super big. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Super big. You know. And maybe maybe people think that it's the, the the property's not worth it, but when I see the concept of it, I see big. You yeah. know, I see big. So yeah, man. Yeah. Have the movie end with Keith David saying the most chilling shit, mm-hmm. and just you know. What would he say? We are gargoyles. Just fucking the lightning and rain and shit like that. It'll be fucking cool, bro. Yeah. Black fucking the theme. Oh, love. Oh man, I I want to get people chills, bro. Ending the movie. (laughs) They want a sequel from us for sure. Yeah. But yeah, man. Anyway. Turns into the next universe, (laughs) the gargoyle verse. (laughs) We uh we 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 um. We merge with the Universal. Yeah. You know, the Universal Monsters versus the Gargoyles. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. But anyway. Yeah, probably wouldn't work out. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I feel like anything could work out as long as people take the time to do it. Take yeah. the time to actually like put a lot of passionate effort into it. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, man. Anything else? I, I, I'm, I'm stumped right now, man. I think, we I, th- I think that's good. That's good, yeah. yeah. We, um, that was pretty fun. Yeah. What do you think about this one? I think it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it was fun. I loved it. Hopefully, you know, I mean, we'll... Maybe we could do it again. Yeah. We could do it again next mm-hmm. week. You know? So, um, so yeah, I think that we, you know, we are going to clock out now. Mm-hmm. That was really fun. Um, we'll do it again next week if you have any more ideas. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure we'll play it a little bit outside when we chill. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, yeah, man, I'm going to have to call it a night. Mm-hmm. I'm not even, you know, but, but yeah, coming, coming at you from our dingy-ass garage. And, you know, sorry for all the audio problems. Mm-hmm. And all dinginess with it, you know, we don't have the best place to record or they whatever. what they were signing up for. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, I mean, how many people are really going to listen to this? My but, mom. Uh, yeah, my mom, too, hopefully. Not really. No, but, uh, oh, my God, I raised an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. But uh, but either way, mm-hmm. I, 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 I want to put this one out, man. Yeah. Let's put this one out. So, just for, just for the fuck of it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, man. All right, bro. All right. Uh, we out of here. See you yeah. later. Well, we'll pray producer next week. That was uh, the return of the Chamber of Chills. See you yeah. later. Outro.